One of my favorite parts about Super Mario Maker 2 is the various power-ups Mario can collect. Not including things Mario wears like Shelmets or rides like Yoshi, there's currently 10 power-ups in the game, being the Mushroom, Fire Flower, and Star, which are in all themes, the Super Ball Flower, the Big Mushroom found in SMB1, the Tanuki Leaf from SMB3, the Cape Feather from Mario World, the Propeller from New Soup, and finally the Cap Owl and Hammer Suit found in 3D World. Today, I want to go over some of my tips on how to use these effectively in your levels. I'll also be giving some tips on how to use specific power-ups in a cool way. So with that being said, join me as I cover some tips and tricks on how to use all of the power-ups in Super Mario Maker 2. This is a long one, so strap in. Now here's one that might not seem important to some people, but it really is. It's almost never a good idea to hide a power-up inside a hidden block, especially in traditional levels. This will make the player think that this was just here for the creator to beat his own level much easier. Which is true in some cases, and untrue in others. Instead, put 1-ups in invisible blocks, since these don't help the creator and just make the player feel happy, especially if they're playing in an endless run. If you want to have a hidden power-up, then I suggest changing one of your pipes that are obvious to see in your levels to create a sub-area that leads to a room with a power-up. That way it feels like much more of a reward for exploration than if it was just a secret dev block. This invisible block stuff is especially bad if it's required to beat a level, so your best bet is to just put a 1-up inside if you want to use an invisible block for a secret. Now another thing that's an in-general tip for all power-ups is to make sure that they can't be used to cheese your own levels. Whether it be by damage boosting or flying over an obstacle, there's a lot of ways your level can be cheesed if someone has a power-up. Here's some of the most common ones. Just damage boosting through an obstacle is very common. There's not really a specific way around this one, since it's really a case-by-case -case scenario. Generally, you're not going to want to give a power-up immediately before or immediately after a challenging part of your level. However, there are definitely exceptions to this rule, such as boss fights, which are generally good to give a power-up beforehand. For the final general tip for all power-ups, power-ups can be placed as rewards for doing many challenges. For example, in my level Frostburn Castle, instead of just having a power-up available, there's a small mini-challenge that rewards the player with a power-up. This challenge should stick with the theme of the level. Here, it's Fire and Ice, and in my level Jumping Piranha Jungle, a piranha plant is guarding the power-up. You can see this done in several Mario games, and usually it find it best to be immediately after the checkpoint. Also, it's totally fine to have them in the open. But if you want a tiny bit more challenge and a bit more of a traditional feel, then I suggest doing what I said here, for a bit more challenge. So now we are going to dive into tips of each of the individual power-ups. So first, let's take a look at the mushroom. Firstly, if you don't want the player to have a mushroom from a previous section, then what you could do is set up a pipe with a saw on top of it like this. The reason you want the player to be entering a pipe is because if you have like a roof with it, a player might be able to just duck under it and slide. So this is the best way to do it. Now a big problem that I often see when people use power-ups are all of the soft locks that can occur. Now, if you don't know what a soft lock is, this is basically a situation where the player can no longer make any progress, and in the worst case scenarios, they can't even die, which forces them to restart. And if they got a checkpoint, restarting from the beginning is very annoying. Unless they want to wait for the timer to expire. Now, from my experience, a lot of the times that power-ups can cause these soft locks is because the maker may not have thought of the scenario. Some common soft locks I see relating to power-ups are Mario getting stuck on stairs like these, being able to break bricks but not being able to return, and a player requiring a power-up to beat a section, however they got hit on the way there and they can't go back. It's safe to say no one likes soft locks, so if you're going to want to avoid these as much as possible. Luckily, most of these have easy fixes. Make your staircases have a bit more room, don't use bricks for roofs, and if you want to have a power-up check, either have a reset door or a way for the player to kill themselves if they fail. There are many more types of soft locks, so what I would suggest doing is playing through the entirety of your level with each of the power-ups that are present in it. This has helped me quite a bit, because I have found a few soft locks in my old levels, especially in Mario Maker 1, so this is a very helpful tip to make some levels in soft lock prevention. Finally, for our last mushroom tip is the progressive power-ups. These are very helpful for making traditional levels feel more like actual traditional levels. You obviously don't have to use these progressive power-ups in all types of levels, but I think it's better to just use these instead of just having a power-up by themselves. Also using a progressive power-up, you can make power-up detectors to see if the player is big or small. This here is a simple example, but there are many ways that this can be used, like maybe making a challenge more difficult if they have a big mushroom.
Okay, on to stars. Never have stars that are required to beat your level hidden away in a hidden block, or just hidden away in general. All this does is frustrate the player. This of course goes for any power-up, but this is especially common with stars. If you want to have a part of your level utilize a star as a required power-up, then I suggest making sure it comes either out of an obvious pipe, or an obvious question mark block. As a second one from stars, enemy spam levels with stars everywhere just aren't fun. They are just annoying, boring, and completely uncreative. There isn't much to say here other than just don't do them. Now I've been very negative towards stars so far, so let's give a positive idea. Star run levels can be really fun, especially in Mario 3 and New Soup, as they have a special type of jump that changes Mario's jump animations and hitboxes. With this new hitbox, you can make it to where Mario has to jump tighter jumps in between one block gaps. Being able to run on munchers and jumping munchers can provide for some much more unique types of platforms, as you can't normally jump on anything that uses the same behavior as flying munchers. And of course, the star makes Mario move a lot faster as well, meaning the whole level will be much more fast-paced. I'm actually surprised by the lack of star speedrun levels I've seen, as they'd be pretty fun. Okay, this is our final one for stars, I promise, but I do want to discuss all the ways Mario can still die even if he is in star form, just in case you want to have a level where Mario is in star mode the whole time, but you still want to challenge him a bit. Mario can still be crushed, can fall into the void, can fall into lava, can fall into poison, and can be forced to die from a pipe exit and re-enter, although for those, there isn't really much use for them. You could even have a rising poison or lava section, so the player has to run around fast to survive from it. Okay, I think that's enough about the star. We still got eight power-ups to talk about. Well, anyways, we have the fire flower. Now for my first tip, I say this pretty much in every tip video, but avoid using fireball spamming Bowser fights. What do I mean by this? Well, you'll see it in several levels, that there's just a Bowser with an infinite amount of fireballs that are needed to kill him to progress. These boss fights aren't fun or creative, and they've been done to death. They really throw off the pacing of the level. If you want to have a boss fight where you have to kill Bowser using fireballs, at least make it creative. Do something cool with the concept instead of just having the player stay in a room with just you and Bowser and nothing else. One really cool thing about the fireball is that they can actually go through clear pipes. So maybe what you could do is have a boss fight such as this one. Mario has to try to kill the Boom Boom at the top while fireballs are coming at him from the side. The design here is fairly difficult. However, you can easily adjust the difficulty by adding a pipe with fire flowers, or making more fire bros spawn, who knows? I've only seen one level use fire flowers like this, so I'd be really interested in seeing more. For my final tip, I just want to say that if you have a shooter level, then having Mario with a fire flower will make it more fun as the clown car will now shoot three fireballs. Okay, so now let's begin with the version exclusive power ups. First is the Super Ball Flower, which I'm really happy made it in by the way. Now the Super Balls can actually do a surprising amount of things that I didn't even know about until making this. They can kill enemies, bounce off of walls, collect coins, big coins, keys, and red coins, activate pals, light the bombs, and finally activate P-switches. This means you could create pretty cool levels based around Mario having to use these powers. I'm a bit surprised I haven't actually seen many speedrun levels using this, so here's a bit of an example I whipped up really fast for this video. Now if you notice in that stage, I included indicator blocks, which are generally good for levels using the Super Ball Flower. That way, the player doesn't have to take a long time trying to guess where to fire the Super Balls, which can get a bit annoying. Usually iron blocks work well as indicators, but if you use a block that's just different from the ground, then you should be fine. Also, if in the air, do a block made out of tracks, as those are pretty helpful as well. Okay, onto the big mushroom. Now I can't take credit for this idea, but this idea was featured in this level was so good I had to include it. So as you all likely know, when landing after jumping with a big mushroom, you can break certain blocks such as question mark blocks, iron blocks, bricks, and ice blocks. Also, technically you can destroy pals as well. However, there is one that a lot of people seem to forget about being chain jump posts. However, they work a bit differently. These are affected by gravity and also allow Mario to jump off of them before they fully disappear. Here's a great level, which wasn't created by me showcasing these mechanics, so I highly suggest you checking this out. It's a very popular level, but still, it's such a creative level that I really want you to check it out, so the code is on screen right now. 
Now this next tip could be considered an in general tip, but I'll place it with the big mushroom for now. Maybe what you could do is as a reward for not taking damage after a challenge, is have blocks only the big mushroom can break through. For example, in my level 1 up's revenge, I have a quick mini boss and afterwards if you were able to beat it without taking any damage, then you'd be able to break through these iron blocks and get a big coin. This tip can be pretty effective for all kinds of power-ups that can break things. For example, the Tanuki Leaf can break things on its side, along with the cape being able to turn turn blocks. Put this one with the big mushroom, as it was pretty easy to show for it. Speaking to the Tanuki Leaf, let's go ahead and move on to that. Now this next one applies to all flying power-ups. Now the clear condition, don't touch the ground after leaving it, can be used pretty well with all these flying and hovering power-ups in a vertical sub-area where you have to avoid obstacles such as spikes, saws, and even ground. Bruh. Now unlike the cape, the Tanuki suit can't fly forever, because after a while the P-meter will start to go down. However, if Mario jumps on an enemy while still in P-flight, his meter gets reset to full, which means you can use a long flying obstacle course where you have to try to land on enemies to continue flying. You can make this a really tight jump, with spacing out the enemies correctly. Now this last one isn't really a tip, but I just want to point out, I think it's really funny how the Tanuki Leaf works in the nighttime of the overworld. I just think it's really funny. Next up is the Cape Feather. Now a really useful tool of the Cape Feather are double backwards conveyors, as they are the most compact form of starting Cape Flight. That way, if you have a level around the Cape flying, you don't have to waste too much space building up speed. Now the cape is really hard to design traditional levels for, as out of all of the flying power-ups, it is by far the most overpowered. With it, you can basically fly over the entire length of the level, so my tips for using the cape is to put some coins in the air to maybe reward the player for using the cape flight. You can also put little areas like this that not only double as rewards for initiating the cape flight, but also forces the player to return to the ground for maybe a final challenge you don't want them to cheese. Of course, you can also have a low roof, making the cape flight ineffective, or at least less effective, if you don't want it to be. And of course, putting up walls every once in a while will make it harder for them to fly with it. For my final tip for the cape feather, is that if the player gets hit during flight, they will, instead of taking damage, begin spinning. This can be used in a cape flight level to force the player into spinning without needing the player to land, which could lead to a smooth transition. This can also be very helpful if your cape level has the no landing clear condition, so that you are able to not only normally fly, but also spin fly. Now on to our final flying power-up, the propeller mushroom. This one here is a lot more focused on vertical movement, up and down, than the other two flying power-ups were. This means maybe you can make a level where Mario has to scale a tall tower using the propeller mushroom. However, for this power-up a lot more than the cape and the tanuki leaf, it's very easy to miss it if you had just put it in a question mark block, so it's very helpful if you put this in a pipe if it's required. Once you activate your upward boost, you normally can't activate it again until landing. Even jumping on an enemy doesn't reset it, instead it just puts you into the normal twirl. Despite this, however, there are still a few ways you can get your upward boost back without touching the ground, which can be helpful for no landing levels. These include landing in a claw, a twister, landing into water, jumping off a clown car, jumping off a cloud, jumping out of a dry bone shell after being in lava, water, or poison, and jumping off a vine. Using all of these combined could lead to a very good propeller-centered level. Now, I did mention that you can get Propeller Mario into a state where he can only normally twirl, which could also be pretty helpful. To get Mario into the state, you need to first propel upwards, then either jump on an enemy, jump off of Yoshi, jump off a of dry bone shell, or get damaged and then collect the power up again. You can also throw an item to get into the state as well. The state can also be very helpful, as you can maybe want Mario to have a challenge where he can't propel, but you still need him to keep the power up for later on in the level. Additionally, in this mode, you can get Mario to spin jump by having him wall jump with the twirl button. Which is the only known way, to me at least, that can get him to spin jump. All around, there are a lot of unique mechanics that the propeller has that makes it a good tool for parkour levels, puzzle levels, and since it isn't as broken as the other flying power-ups in this game, it can be easier to use in traditional levels as well. Now that's it for the four main themes, but we still got two power-ups to go from 3D World. 
For the cat ball, I made a whole level around this, so all of my ideas will be coming from there. So here's the ID if you want to check it out. For our first tip, if you swipe a bonsai bill, either coming towards you from the front or background, you can easily turn it around to make it destroy or kill something else. This could be helpful for many scenarios like a puzzle, secret, boss fight, and more. Now when designing a level using the cat bell, make sure that the level can't be cheesed by its climbing mechanics, as I've seen a lot of levels be cheesed by this, especially in multiplayer versus. All you have to do is make your walls go all the way to the top or have a ceiling. Or instead of just having a wall, maybe you could have a small secret like coins or one-ups at the top of the wall to reward the player for its exploration. For our final cat bell tip, here's a little boss fight I designed for the power-up. Using its unique mechanic of being able to climb on sailing solids forever, I made a boss fight where you have to have bullet bills that chase you, that are lined on the walls, have to shoot out at iron blocks to break through so you can get red coins to escape. I made a video on 10 boss fights including this one, so if you want to see more boss fights then I suggest going in and checking that video out. Okay, finally on to the last power up, the new power up created for Mario Maker 2, the Builder power up. There's quite a bit to go over with this power up, so let's jump right into it. So instead of giving a level making tip first, here's actually a gameplay tip. If you get a level with a hammer inside a question block in versus mode, then if you collect the hammer first, you can destroy the question mark block to make sure nobody else can get one, which can lead to you getting a significant advantage. This also works with the big mushroom as well. Long hammer excavation is not fun at all. It takes such a long time to mine the iron blocks that it's just obnoxious. This also applies to tail excavation, cape excavation, claw excavation, and big mushroom excavation vertically. Every time I see this used in a level, it really slows down the pacing and just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. So I prefer if this doesn't occur. The hammer power-up, with its boxes, are one of the best cheating tools in Mario Maker. You're going to want to make sure while designing a level that Mario can't use these boxes to make a jump he isn't supposed to. Just add a wall high enough that the player can't cheese it, or make a roof so that the player can't go over it anyway. Speaking of these crates, there's quite a lot of uses for them. Since they can be placed onto pretty much anything, they can be helpful to make a path over lava, spikes, or piranha creepers. You can also throw them into clear pipes, which can lead to some tricky parkour jumps, like this one seen here. But anyways, that's it for this video. What is your favorite power-up in Mario Maker 2? Let me know in the comments! This video took me such a long time to make, so if you all enjoyed it, then it'd mean a lot to me if you could drop a like or maybe even subscribe to get notified whenever I upload anything about Mario Maker or anything Nintendo Switch. Speaking of which, thank you all for 6,000 subscribers. Uh, I really was not expecting to hit it this fast. I hit 1,000, like, just about a month ago, and it's crazy that I've already gotten six, six times that much. It's, it's just crazy. You guys are the best. Thank you so much. Also, if you want to join my Discord so you can share your levels or play Smash Bros. with over 100 members, then the link is in the description along with my Twitter. I do want to start making a series where I play your Discord levels, and then I pick my top 15 out of all of those levels, so that maybe some more people can play your levels as well. So if you want to be a part of that, then I suggest checking that out. But anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.